Well, I mean, I think that in any, you know, in a World Cup, I mean, obviously, again, we were talking about the Australia game before we came on the air. I mean, Tim Cahill today got what, what some people think is a, a harsh red card. I, I do think it was a justified red card. The World Cup is, is refereed a lot more strictly than other competitions. Mm-hmm. And, and you've got to know when you come into it, um, after the first game or so, and, you, and as a manager and as players, you watch the other games, you do try to figure out what the point of emphasis is mm-hmm. that FIFA's trying to impose uh, on the matches at this time. And right now, I, I still think it's up in the air. And, and I, again, I do give credit to, to both Bradleys for having uh, Michael cut off more of the passing lanes, be more mm-hmm. of a floating player. I thought he was extremely effective in denying them space. Right. Um, I don't think he would have been as effective running uh, onto the ball as he might have been against lesser opposition because, frankly, against England, a team that wants to exploit space that does move well off the ball, you do have somebody to choke up those lanes. That was that was the thing the USA did best last night, was, was really not give England kind of any space to move, kept moving them out and forcing them to play rather simplistic balls in that are very easy for Anyu Demerit and Howard to handle. Um, you know, you can't, just as it's easy to say, it's very difficult to beat England in the air. It's very difficult to beat the USA in the air. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you are able to make people move away from one of our central weaknesses, which is, you know, root one down the gut, it does help you. We, we did, I think, really keep them from getting any kind of cohesive flow together. Mm-hmm. And, and I do credit Bradley for that. I thought he had a good game. Yeah. Well, we're, believe it or not, our 10 minutes are almost up, Jamie. So I oh, want yeah. to throw a couple questions at you at once sure. and <clears throat> give you a couple minutes to answer them. Uh, in a recent uh, piece that you did, uh, it was a counterpoint, I guess, with Ives uh, <laughs> yep. about uh, the United States. Uh, you did call the United States an average team. I'm sure there are going to be a lot of people that are going to take you to task for that because they don't feel that way. But um, number one, can you explain what you meant by average? And number two, mm-hmm. can you give us some predictions, uh, U.S. versus Slovenia and Algeria? Um, and after last night's game, do you think it's likely we'll see the United States get through group stage, or is that pr- premature? Well, I mean, I'll answer the last question first. I mean, I think the United States is expected to get out of the group stage. I think they always have been. Right. Um, and I think one of the, the central things I've taken away so far from these, these first few days is that the European teams that have made um, the World Cup in general are weaker than I think everybody thought. I'm not sure yet whether that's because we're playing on truly neutral ground, uh, as happened in 2002 in both Korea and Japan, or whether it's because these guys are just coming in and uh, you know they're they're tired out from their seasons. I, I'm I don't think it's early enough to say one way or the other. Um, as for the Americans, you know, yeah, they they are an average team. Um, we're talking about average, however, in the top tier of world teams. I mean, there are obviously 32 teams at the World Cup. The USA is now consistently getting into the World Cup, so it's very safe to say that you're in the top 30 teams. But if you're, you know, and, and if you're ranked, you know, between 50 and 25, which I think is fair for the United States, then you'd be a, a lower average team. Uh, I, I don't think there's any shame in that, honestly. I think people no. might be thinking that I'm saying, oh, you know, the the United States is, uh, you know, no better than than Costa Rica or no better than Australia or. <laughs> You know, they're they're the same as a mid-level African team. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying they're average for where they want to be. Mm -hmm. The United States has designs and goals of winning the World Cup. It's just the population and the resources to ultimately make a serious run at that. Mm -hmm. Right now, they are falling, I think, very short of that in a couple key areas. Coaching and development of players obviously come to the top of that list. Yeah, but absolutely. when you talk about average at the very top, you, you know, you're really talking, again, you're talking about being in the middle. They're, they're getting a C compared to all the other really good teams. I mean, I don't think anybody really expects them to consistently beat, uh, you know, a Germany or a Spain uh, or even an England um, uh, or a Portugal uh, on any given day on European soil. And that's because they haven't done it. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, when you do that, then I think you start to say, OK, this is a team that can win any game any time. Right now, the United States has, has, has proved that it can win a lot of games in American soil. Mm-hmm. It has proved that on neutral ground, it can play with anybody. Some of those games it wins, some of those games it loses. Mm-hmm. But what it hasn't done is take the next step to travel well and play on somebody else's home turf and beat them. When you mm-hmm. do that, then you're a good team. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'll give an example again from today. You know, Germany thrashed Australia four to nothing. Mm-hmm. That's what a good team does. A good team takes apart a bad team right, right. away. Right. And that's what you saw. The United States is not able yet to impose its will on any other team. Right now, it just competes with every other team. And like I said, on any given day, it can win 
uh, or can lose, but it doesn't impose its will. And that's the difference between a good team and an average team, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, I wish we had more time because I, I, I probably have about 10 more follow-up questions to all those comments. <laughs> I certainly have. I'm sorry, but, you know, with, with working for Fox, the sky is our uh, <laughs> part So I must uh, go pay the piper, so to speak. Absolutely. I understand it. Well, Jamie, thanks for, for joining us uh, for these 10 minutes. And uh, maybe if we get a chance down the line, we'll have you back uh, after the World Cup to talk about uh, how things all worked out. That'd be super. And thanks so much for having me on. I hope you guys uh, and your listeners enjoyed it. Thank you, Jamie. Take care. Thank you.